Welcome. Welcome to this, the worship recording for July 18th, 2021. And today we're going to take a look at a few psalms that are a few of my favorite things. And as we seek to honor God and to thank God for the gift that God has bestowed not only through the psalms, but in the person of Jesus, let us seek to worship God this day here at the Ramapo Reformed Church. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. One of the fun things to think about at this time of the year is Christmas in July. In fact, I almost wore one of my Christmas ties in order to celebrate in God's house with you this day. But I didn't. Nevertheless, in a sense, every time we gather together, in God's house is a little bit of Christmas as we seek the birth of God's Spirit in our hearts. There's a whole lot of Easter as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus and that promise of new life. There's a little bit of all of God's ministry and ability and love and grace and kindness wrapped up together in the person of Jesus Christ. Let us join together as we show God our appreciation, give God our praise and worship, and seek to walk worthily in the path that God might show us. Please join me on the screen for our call to worship this day. Fools say in their hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt and there is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on humankind to see if there are any who are wise, who seek after God. If we trust in ourselves, we deceive ourselves. But when we trust in the Lord, we may gain a wise heart. Let us step forward to that which is beyond all knowing, yet is the source of all knowledge, and to that which is beyond all comprehension, yet gives sense to all we perceive. Let us come before God and worship and let us pray oh gracious God you have brought us near when we have been far off you have made us we who are separated from each other 
so that we might be one with you and each other, that we might share in the covenants of your promise and the blessings of your house. Help us to sense your loving presence and to know and accept each other as full and equal members before you. Heal our divisions and enable us to delight in the differences that display the wondrous and rich diversity of who we are as your family gathered this day at this time in celebration. For we ask in Jesus' name, Amen. And Amen. And grace to you and peace from God, who has created us in God's image, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us join together and sing our opening song of praise. preparation for our prayer of confession as we have now reached the halfway point in the Major League Baseball season this past week the All-Stars got together and played their annual classic well it's not annual because they didn't play it last year and this time they played it in Denver Colorado and I believe the American League won again in any event we, individually, are not all-stars. Otherwise, we'd be in Colorado. Each of us still has been given gifts and talents. And even though we may not be as proficient as someone else, we can all contribute. In fact, each of us may be better at one thing than most others because that's the gift that we've been given. And it is as we seek out our gifts from 
God and use them for the building up of God's kingdom that we are God's all-stars and part of God's lineup so that we may help bring about positive change in the spiritual environment in which we live. No matter who we are, where we are, Wherever at bat we may find ourselves, to use the baseball analogy, we're going to seek to do our best for God and continue in our training as we pray together the prayer that we might find printed on the screen. And let us pray. Without you, loving God, we are nothing. In our pride, we act as if there is no God. With our words, we profess our belief, but outsiders who judge us by our actions might wonder if this is true. Our conscience at least challenges us, and we thank you, O oh God, that this is so. May we live like believers as a demonstration that our faith is not hollow. With your help, may our hearts and our wills be strengthened. May the world know that there is a God and that you as creator are the source of love and light. We ask this through him who showed us love, Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. And let us continue with our personal prayers before God at this time. And let us pray. And hear now these words of assurance. Hostility has been put to death, and divisions have been reconciled through the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we who were separated from God and one another by our sin may be assured that we are forgiven and restored in God's sight to full membership in the family of faith. Thanks be to God for this precious gift made real for us through the person and work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, believe this good, no, good news, and let us go forth to live in peace. And may the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, live in our hearts and our minds as we worship this day. May the peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Let us take this opportunity to share the peace of Christ with one another, with those with whom we may be gathered, or with those with whom we may be able to reach out to, at this time. And amen. of reading for this day comes to us once again from the book of Psalms. In fact, today is just loaded with Psalms everywhere, as we shall soon see. But as for now, please join me in this song of a sense that is an assurance of God's protection. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. And this is the word of the Lord, and thanks be to God.
uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone and a first time visitor. You're not too late. Welcome as well. As for now, I'd ask that you please join me in prayer as we prepare to open God's word for this day. And let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we lift up our hearts to you as did the psalmist so many times before. Please bless our reading from this book of poetry so that we may gain insight and wisdom to follow you all our days. For we ask in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Both of our scripture lessons for this day come to us from the book of Psalms. As I mentioned earlier for the responsive reading, there's Psalms everywhere you can look today. And so our first Psalm, well, is quite appropriately Psalm 1, subtitled, The Two Ways. Please join me on the screen. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Oh my. Oh my. Our second passage comes to us from Psalm 127, a song of ascents, meaning like a prayer up to God. It's attributed to Solomon. And it talks about God's blessing in the home. Please join me once again on the screen. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the sons of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. And this is the word of the Lord, and thanks be to God. Hey everyone, how are we doing today? Well, too bad it's not really Christmas, huh? Even though we talked about Christmas in July earlier. But in any event, my question for today is, have you ever had your picture taken and your picture got put in a frame? You know, a frame is what highlights that which is in it. So look at this frame I found. Look at, see, how's this? Well, what do you mean, Pastor Bill? That's no frame, that's a broken toilet seat. And you would be right. See that little polarized bear? See that? And so perhaps what I'm trying to say is I desperately think of a way to find an illustration to use a broken toilet seat this day is that you can't always use everything for its unintended purpose. Frames are made specifically so that they highlight that which is in them. So, don't sell yourselves short. Don't take the easy way. As the psalmist said, there are two ways. Do not follow the counsel of the wicked or sit in the seat of scoffers. Oh, Pastor Bill, you say, well, that's scoffing. But instead, delight yourself in the law of the Lord. And well, you know, when you're looking to take a picture, find something better than a broken toilet seat. That's always a good idea. Let's think about that and let's pray. Oh gracious God, you have made us too valuable and too well in order to not find the best way in which we can offer ourselves to you. Help us not to sell ourselves short, 
but seek to follow you this day and always as your created beings, created in your image this day and always. For we ask in Jesus' name, Amen. And Amen! count the ways to sing your praise, where of course that part of scripture which was originally sung is to be found in the Old Testament book of Psalms. But the question then is, how many ways might there actually be? Within the 150 poems we have received, some might say there are as many as seven categories of psalms, while others suggest five types including praise psalms, wisdom psalms, royal psalms of coronation, psalms of thanksgiving, and psalms of lament. Each of these categories of psalms is unique in purpose, demonstrating the varying purposes of praising and worshiping God, regardless of life's circumstances. Many psalms are attributed to King David, while many others have instruction on how to sing them, which have been long forgotten. Nevertheless, when it comes to counting the ways in which to sing God's praise, the book of Psalms is the place to be. So how about we begin at the beginning with Psalm 1, which we read as our first passage of scripture this day. Right off the bat, the psalmist wants to point out the difference between the right way and the wrong way. I have a friend, well, many people have this friend, where they say there's only two ways to do anything, the right way and the wrong way. And as for the psalmist, the right way involves extolling the virtues, virtues of the law of God. Lest we forget that the law is seen as God's gift to the Hebrew people. 
The law brings life. For when the Hebrew people messed up, and indeed, like all of us, they mess up all the time, the law provided a way to reconnect back to God. But the part I really enjoy about Psalm 1 is the imagery of a tree planted by streams of water, a tree that yields its fruit in season, and its leaves do not wither. I find comfort to realize that no one is expected to be 100% productive or on the ball all the time, but that we all have seasons in which we find ourselves to be fruitful, and in which we are gathering strength at those other times in preparation for the next season, whenever figuratively it may be is part of the natural cycle of life. I link this image in my mind to Jesus when he called himself then the living water. He talked about living water to the woman at the well in John chapter 4. I like to think that as we have our roots firmly planted in the love and knowledge of God and are tapped into the living water provided by Jesus, how could our leaves ever think or even dare to wither? On the other hand, I never dwell much on the wicked being blown away like the chaff in the wind, except to know enough that this is an undesirable outcome in life. Our responsive reading last week was Psalm 6. So, well, let's just read it again real quick, shall we? Please join me. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, or discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are shaking with terror. My soul also is struck with terror, while you, O Lord, how long? Turn, O oh Lord, save my life. Deliver me for the sake of your steadfast love. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In Sheol, who can give you praise? Sheol is the land of the dead. I am weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. My eyes waste away because of grief. They grow weak because of all my foes. Depart from me, all you workers of evil, for the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be ashamed and struck with terror. They shall turn back and in a moment be put to shame. I first came across Psalm 6 as a topic for an ex exegetical paper in a class I was taking on lament psalms. And truth be told, of the 20 or so lament psalms, I chose Psalm 6 for my paper because it was the shortest. But as I translated it from Hebrew and got to know this psalm more closely, it has become one of my favorite ever. For in these brief set of 10 verses of rhythmic couplets, the psalmist lets God have it with both barrels. Boom, boom! How long, O oh Lord? What good am I to you if I am dead? But even as the psalmist pleads his case before the Lord, and like all lament psalms except one, the psalmist becomes self-assured that God will hear his plea and will respond favorably to his lament. As for me, I'm getting better, better at lamenting. But I think in our modern society, we have a bit of a cultural inhibition about complaining to God. Perhaps we think it will be too disrespectful. And otherwise, it may even indicate that we do not have enough faith. Oh my. And that simply is not the case. Because truth be told, God can take it. God's pretty tough. And because the psalmist had a relationship with God, the psalmist felt perfectly justified in offering his lament. And I imagine, like in this case, 
this psalmist offered his lament rather loudly and without reserve. The Lord is not simply a God when life is good. Oh no, for God is quite willing to stand in the gap when we are suffering. And God still loves us, even when we blame God unfairly for what is happening. I never realized ten verses could be infused with so much meaning. Our responsive reading for this day is Psalm 121. And I have grown to love this psalm, mainly through reading it so often as part of a funeral liturgy that I use. This psalm is included as it speaks of God's comprehensive protection and of God's providing a source of strength and hope. These days, as we all have cell phones, we don't really need to memorize phone numbers because they're on speed dial or we can touch a link and get to a number more quickly. Or we simply go to our contact page and, and then hit that appropriate link. But when one is in a tight spot and needs help, whether it is by phone, having memorized the number can help us avoid all sorts of headaches and pain. Knowing Psalm 121 is like that for me. Being able to pull up the imagery and phrases unconsciously of the sun not striking me by day nor the moon by night provides a tangible level of comfort and trust for which it becomes at times difficult for me to adequately express my appreciation for this promise of God. Our second passage of scripture that we read came to us from Psalm 127. This was a favorite psalm when I was in college, primarily because it advocated getting a good night's rest. For after all, it said, um, unless the Lord, well, no, that's in the beginning. It says, it is vain that you rise up early and go late to rest eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. What's the sense of pulling an all-nighter if the Lord provides sleep to those whom God loves? Well, and it didn't prevent me from pulling all-nighters, I'll tell you. Nevertheless, it's the first verse of this psalm that sets the proper tone for a life plan. Unless the Lord builds the house, the labors build it in vain, Unless the Lord guards the city, those who watch it, watch it in vain. For in the end, it is only as we seek to have God in our lives that we may have the confidence to know that whatever may happen, our relationship and our faith rest upon a solid foundation. A personal example of this is the gift I gave Debbie when we were first married. It was a silver bracelet with a charm engraved, Psalm 127, verse 1, and our wedding date. We move now to Psalm 139, and we'll do the first 12 verses. Here, let's read it together. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, once again, the land of the dead, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, 
Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. Now I realize many people would not necessarily include Psalm 139 on their list of favorites, as I have, because from one point of view it would seem that God is smothering us. Yet from the point of view that I prefer, these first 12 verses describe how there is nowhere I can physically, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, or whateverly go where God will not be available at all times and in all places to see me safely through. And now for something slightly different as we conclude with two passages from Ecclesiastes often attributed to Solomon for he experienced the full breadth of life and explored its meaning and found that, well, much of life was vanity. But here, for now, let us read chapter 3, verses 1 through 15, and chapter 12, verses 13 and 14, which happen to be the very last two chapters of this book. But for now, to chapter 3. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has done this so that all should stand and all before Him. That which is already has been. That which is to be already is. And God seeks out what has gone by. And now to the last uh, two verses of the book in chapter 12. In the, the end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for that is the whole duty of everyone. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, comprises a set of well-known verses. Okay, okay. So this is not technically from the book of Psalms, but it does read very much like a poem, and it has been sung. In fact, a 1960s folk song, Turn, 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 written by Pete Seeger, and qu covered quite famously by the birds, use this text as its lyrics. These verses have always spoken to me because when we used to sing it in the youth group while living in New York, well, the title on the mimeograph sheet, because that's how we copied things back in the 80s, well, it came out instead of turn, 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 it looked more like tuna, tuna, tuna. 
And they say, come on, Bill, let's sing tuna, tuna, tuna. Oh, it was a lot of fun. Still for me, these verses provide a basic philosophy for living. Work and do not forget to enjoy life. Be as responsible as you can and realize that in the end, all is accomplished through the grace of God. We have responsibility, each of us, but we are not intended to take life so seriously that we forget how to live. As I mentioned, this is often attributed to Solomon as the teacher, or quoheleth, as it is written uh, in, the, in the Septuagint. And he is the assigned author of Ecclesiastes, and Solomon, for all his wealth and all his experience, nearly sank into deep depression at the futility of our existence. In fact, he famously claimed that all of life is vanity. Nevertheless, at the end of it all, he realized that God still gets to be God. And our main job and responsibility is to be simply God's children and be God's children the best way that we can be. So how do I count the ways to sing God's praises? Indeed, there are too many in the book of Psalms and Ecclesiastes contain more ways than we can cover. Yet suffice it to say that however we find a way to praise God through hymns and songs and poems and prose and actions, which often speak louder than words, or perhaps times of sheer and still silence, for that too can praise God. However we choose or find, it will be worth it. Because it is the object of such praise is that which gives all of us and that which we do and accomplish its ultimate meaning. And because of the object of our praise, God Almighty, that is what gives us our value. Let us think about this and consider, as does the psalmist, the glory of God. And let us pray. Oh, gracious God, sometimes we feel way in over our heads. Thank you that you are patient and nourish us through your Holy Spirit. Help us to help each other to follow your example of grace and mercy. Help us sink our roots deep in you so our leaves will not wither in times of stress and that we may bear fruit in season to share with those who are hungry and in need of nourishment. We ask and pray in the name of your Son, Jesus, who even though he suffered himself, was raised triumphant to be our promise and everlasting seal of joy. For this we ask in Jesus' name. And amen. And now as we begin to respond to God's love, let us do so by affirming our faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. So if you would please join me on the screen, let us seek to confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen. As we enter now into a time of offering, as we have said every week, make sure you're okay. And as God has blessed you and you are able to give and have the desire to do so, well, we thank you and are grateful. You can um, give online uh, through our website, you can mail a gift in, drop one off at the church office, or come to church on Sunday mornings and put something in the plate. However you choose is most appreciated. And please now at this time, 
Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we thank you this day for all your good gifts. Please bless those who give and those who receive so that all may, well, offer themselves to you in humble, humble obedience and prayer. For it is in Jesus' name in which we are thankful and pray. Amen. And amen. And let us sing our doxology together. July is the Star of Hope Ministries based out of Patterson, seeking to equip men and women to be leaders of the faith in the inner city, up and down and across the width of New Jersey, wherever God's call may take them, and also to equip school children in the inner city for the upcoming school year beginning in September. If you can help out with this worthy ministry, your gift is most appreciative. We have a service of witness to the resurrection of Jesus and the celebration of the life of Bob Bender, the pastor of this church in the late 70s through the early 90s on July 24th, a Saturday uh, at 11 a.m. Also too, the next day on the 25th, well, that just happens to be my last Sunday in the pulpit before Debbie and I retire after 19 full years of serving this church. And we are most appreciative for the opportunity in which to do so. So if you can join us that day, I would certainly welcome your participation. So thank you. But as for now, I would ask that you please join me in prayer and let us pray. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you open for us a new and living way into your presence. We ask that you give us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Guide us by your word and spirit among all the perils and temptations that we may face, so that we may not wander from your way, nor stumble in the darkness, but may finish our course in safety. Through all the cares of our daily lives, help make us attentive to your voice and alert to your presence, that we may always seek your grace in all that we do, and that we may treasure your word above all else, until, that is, we find our eternal rest in you. We ask for strength through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Lord, once again, we thank you for our essential workers, for those who man the retail establishments, for those who deliver the goods by truck or by rail or plane or over the roads. Lord, thank you for those who deliver the people to their jobs through buses and trains and planes and thank you. Thank you for the hospitals and the doctors and the nurses and the EMT and the support staff in helping to keep us safe throughout this pandemic as best as they could. Please strengthen them, Lord. Please help us, Lord, as variants raise their, well, raise their contagious heads. May we seek to be healthy and strong. Thank you for the vaccines that have been developed. And may those who feel comfortable find a way to become vaccinated. Please, Lord, we thank you this day for all your good gifts. For those who thou are facing surgery, surgical procedures, may they go as planned and accomplish that for which they are designed. For those who are on the men, 
May they continue to rehab and grow stronger day by day. For those, Lord, who are grieving the loss of a loved one, recently or within the past many months because of the pandemic, and have yet had the opportunity to remember and properly celebrate their life, we pray for solace and comfort and grace. Lord, for those of us who deal with chronic pain, we're day in and day out. We know the prognosis is that nothing will change to make things better. But yet we need strength each and every day in order to not only get through the day, but to accomplish that which we hope to do. Thank you, O oh gracious God, for those who are traveling, keep them safe, help them reach their destinations, and so return home to lift up their hearts in their own home, for those who are, well, those who are taking a sabbatical, a summer vacation, may we have a time of rest and renewal as we prepare for a new term of learning beginning in September. One that's hopefully in person and where we can, well, physically interact with those who are seeking to teach us. Thank you, O oh gracious God, for all these things. We ask for your protection for those who serve us in uniform, whether here or abroad, abroad, and especially those who find themselves in harm's way. In all these things, we are thankful, O oh Lord, as we ask for your protection through the words of the psalmist, through the words of Scripture, from those prayers that lie deep within our hearts. We lay at the foot of your throne as together we pray the words that your Son, our Savior, taught us by saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And amen. And please let us join together in our closing hymn.
promise that we share this day as we seek God's protection, God's assurance of care, God's knowledge that wherever we are, God is with us, and God's compassion when we find ourselves ill. May God go with us this day and always until we have the opportunity to lift up our hearts and voices in song and prayer and psalms and praise in God's house together, virtually or in person. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us this day. And as the author of Ecclesiastes told us, there is a time and a purpose for every matter under heaven. So let us seek God's grace as we go forth. And like the psalmist, seek to praise God in all aspects of our lives. For God is always with us. And God is always there ahead and behind, ready to protect and guide us. And even hear our lament when such a time arises. Until next time, when the time and purpose is to worship together in God's house, may God go with you this day and always. Amen.